up and running. Thanks once again for joining me. I've got another incredible lesson coming your way. This one regarding parallel and perpendicular lines. We're going to start with parallel lines. You've got your pencil. I've got my notes. You've got your notes. Let's go ahead and do this. We've got parallel lines coming first. I want you to draw a line on top. And I want you to draw a line right below it. Make sure they're both perfectly straight like railroad tracks. They have to never touch each other. Even when they are stretched out, your lines can never touch. So that means on this side here, I want you to draw this and make one tilted in a little bit. Now, even though these do not touch, they will eventually if I stretch them out. So I stretch this one out and I stretch this one out. Eventually, they connect with one another. Eventually, you could see the pathway that they're taken. Trains will not work on lines that are not parallel, on tracks that are not parallel. So over here, you're going to say this is wrong. And over here, you're going to put two arrows. This is the proof. Those arrows are telling the person looking at these lines that they are indeed parallel. Now, there's ways to prove that they're parallel. We're going to look at that later on in this lesson. But first, let's take a look at what perpendicular lines are. So perpendicular lines are really interesting because whereas parallel lines never touch and never will touch, perpendicular lines are touching. They do connect. If you make um, an L, and it's a perfect L, which means that the bottom is not tilting up or down. It is flat, and this is rising up. We measure this angle here, and we put a little box. That means it is 90 degrees. This is a box. And 90 degrees means perpendicular. So in perpendicular, all it means is you've got a 90 degree angle. And we can make 90 degree angles not just with L's, but we can make them also with T's. Or we can make them with plus signs. So make a plus sign. You know, these are all perpendicular angles. This one has one perpendicular angle. This one here, we can put a box here, but we can put a box on the other side because it has two perpendicular angles and here we don't have one we don't have two we don't have three we got four baby we got four perpendicular angles in this one so perpendicular means 90 degrees now what about parallel what about parallel how do we test to make sure they're parallel you know if you're an engineer and you're building railroad tracks you're building these tracks you better make sure that they're 100 percent parallel otherwise you know what's going to happen to that train it's no good so we have to test it as an engineer. And there's a very simple test that's called measure the distance. Here's how you do it. You take a ruler. It's as simple as that. You take a ruler and you put it on one side. Look what it says here. It says are AC and DF parallel. What is AC and what is DF? Before I take my ruler, look at this. AC is, here's A and here's C. So AC is this line. But what about B? We don't include letters that are in the middle for lines. We do for angles. Like angles, if they have like three letters, we include them all. But for straight lines, we don't include the middle letter. We just say line AC. We include the endpoints only. It says, is AC parallel to DF? Here's DF, D and F. Then it goes on and saying, here's the solution. Measure the distance from A to D. Here's A. Here's D. Take a ruler and measure the distance. I get, oh, it's hard to see. Um, uh, let's zoom in. It looks like about 3.3. So I'm going to write 3.3. Then measure the distance from C to F. Here's C and here's F. You measure it on the other side. Line up your ruler. Oh, look at that. Exactly 3.3. We're going to write it in here. You know what that means? It means that the space has remained the same as the tracks have stretched out, which means that the tracks did not get wider and they did not get narrower, which is a good thing if you want to run a train on it because the tracks are parallel. They will never touch. And we can go ahead and put our little arrowheads on them. They will go forever and ever and ever and never touch. So what is this line here in the middle for? That's for the next part, for the next test. Let's take a look at it. It's called the perpendicular line test. But Mr. Mellon, we're doing parallel lines, not perpendicular lines. Right. But you can use perpendicular lines to test for parallel lines. I'm going to show you how. Because parallel lines, 
if there are train tracks, what are you going to put in between the train tracks? You're going to put connectors. Those connectors hold the train tracks together. So this connector here, there's going to be another one here. And you're going to show you, see, this is the wooden connector. Then you're going to put one over here. You're going to connect the train tracks. And this is a wooden connector. And this train track, if you're looking at it from up above, will have connectors stretching all the way across. But the key thing is those connectors have to be perpendicular to the train tracks. Oh, Mr. Mel, what does perpendicular mean again? It means 90 degrees. And if you look at this protractor, when we measure this angle that it makes, look what that number on the top is. Yeah, you might, it might be hard to see, but it says 90 degrees, which means that these two are going to be parallel to each other because parallel lines will make 90 degrees when you connect them with one another. Right. And we can prove it another way by taking this triangle here and lining it up to the edge of that line. And if it lines up perfectly, which it does, let me erase, let me erase this so it's uh, more visible. If I line it up over here, see that vertical line and the train track? It's perpendicular. It is 100% 90 degrees, which means these two here must be parallel. And so angle BED, this little, uh, that's not Pac-Man, that's an angle. That angle sign, angle bed, here's B, here's E, and here's D. This angle over here is 90 degrees. And only parallel lines can do that. If these lines were not parallel, let's say they were like this. Say the, say the engineer messed up and you tried to connect them. Does that look like 90 degrees to you? No. Does any of them look, they don't. But Mr. Mom, that's 90 degrees. Yeah, but they all have to be 90, right? So it's not parallel. But this one is. I'm not going to do all of the examples because there are some here that are pretty simple. Like this one. I'm not going to bother with this one. I'm going to move on to the next one. Let's go uh, for example two. It says draw parallel line segments. Oh no, we haven't looked at that. Look, it's not that hard. I won't even do it. I'm just going to show you how just to save some time. First, draw your line. So we have line BA. Then take a ruler, just a ruler like this, and put it flat on the bottom. And you can make sure it's flat by taking a triangle and lining it up with the edge of that line. That flat part here and the, and the, and the ruler below it have to be touching. Then you know what you do? You pick, up this, you pick up this triangle and you shift it over. You move it over. So now it's going to be over here. Can you see that over here? Here, let me, uh, let me bring it up higher for you. You're going to shift it over to the left or to the right. It doesn't matter which side you go. And then you're going to draw another line. And you know what happens between these two lines? They are parallel. That's how you make parallel lines. It's pretty simple. Which takes us now to perpendicular lines. How do we draw them? And how do we test for them to make sure they're perpendicular? Drawing them is simple. I won't even bother reading all of this on the side. It's step-by-step -step stuff. You can read it on your own. But essentially, it is saying, draw a line, EF. Don't put a dot in the middle yet. Just draw EF. And make it a certain length. doesn't matter how long it is. But then at some point, you're going to have to make a perpendicular line to it. So some line that connects it, that makes 90 degrees. So you're going to put a dot here. We put a dot over here. And it doesn't have to, it could be on the side, anywhere you want. Then you take your protractor and you line it up here on the dot so that the middle of the protractor is centered right on the dot. Then you take your pencil and you go to 90 degrees over here and you make a dot. And then you know what you do? You, you connect the dots. That's all. You just connect the dots. You go like this. You go, cha, and voila. You've made two perpendicular lines. Now we have to give these um, lines letter names so we can identify them. So they ask us here to call this one here a G and call this one an H. They could have picked any other letter. It would not have made any difference. But you know what? There's another way of doing it. Another way. Um, this one may be simpler, maybe faster. But you go like this. You make your line again, EF. Just make EF. 
put a dot anywhere on the line. It could be on the sides again. It could be anywhere that you want. And then take a ruler and line it up vertically. And you can tell with rulers if you've lined it up vertically because the horizontal lines on the ruler, these horizontal lines will line up, um, will match up perfectly with your horizontal line here. If your ruler was tilted a little bit, then those lines will not match up. Those little lines on the ruler won't match up with your horizontal line there. But once you've lined it up, then you just draw, just do a vertical line. Just make a vertical line. Just go like this, go, and it's done. Then we can go ahead and say, hey, look, we proved it. We can make a little box here, put a little box there. Life is good. Then move on. This one here says, draw a line segment perpendicular to WX. Here's WX. I'm going to put a dot in the middle. I'm, I think it says somewhere in the steps. Put, call it P. And uh, then we're going to make a perpendicular one using the protractor. So again, the center of the protractor lines up here. And 90 degrees is over here. Put a dot and connect the dots. Just connect and go. Rah, done. 90 degrees. Put a little box. Go ahead. Do that. Moving on. Oh my God, so many steps here that that seem to complicate it. But really, that's all it is. Let's do a couple practice here. Are these parallel or are they perpendicular? They're parallel. Not only do they have these arrow here, arrowheads here, that's kind of the giveaway, because it's telling us even if you stretch them out, they will never touch. They are parallel. You can go ahead and explain it any way you want. Are these parallel? No. Parallel lines cannot touch. These touch. Okay, but does that mean it's perpendicular? Well, only if it's 90 degrees. And look, they put the box over here to tell us it's 90. Yes, it is perpendicular. How about the next one? Oh, man, look at these. They're not parallel because Mr. Malham said parallel lines never ever touch. These touch. So they must be perpendicular. Only if they make 90 degrees. I don't see a box here. And neither do any of these look like perfect L's or perfect T's or perfect plus signs. So it's not parallel. It's not perpendicular. It's neither. How about this last one? What is that? Well, some of you are like, Mr. Mountain, stand back. I don't need you anymore. I'm looking at these arrowheads. That's parallel. These will never, ever touch. You'd be absolutely correct. Some key ideas before I bid you farewell. Parallel lines never touch, even when extended. Put a check mark if you get that. Perpendicular lines form a perfect L, T, or plus sign. Put a check mark if you get that one. Then we moved on to the tests. You can prove two lines are parallel by measuring the space on both ends of the line. And the numbers have to be the same. Put a check if you get that. You can also test parallel lines by connecting them and measuring the angle. If it's 90 degrees, these lines are parallel. Put a check mark if you get that. We can also prove lines are perpendicular. How do you prove these are perpendicular? You get a protractor. You take it out, you whip it out, you line it up. Then center it on the T. Look up. Oh, baby, look at that. It's exactly on 90. That's proof. But you can, you can also use the triangle test. Remember that triangle, that funky little thing in your geometry kit? Line it up on the edge of this. And if it lines up, it's perpendicular. So put a check mark beside these two if you get them. And I believe that's it. Thanks very much again for your time. We are pushing uh, a few minutes here. Uh, what are we at? About 14 minutes. It's not bad. Thanks again for giving me 14 minutes of your time. You are now wiser than you were 14 minutes ago. Have a great day. I look forward to seeing you later. Ah!